Example number two. Sorry. Well, it's example two. It's question four B in your blue notebook. They're giving you triangle P, Q, R, and they told you that it's similar to triangle S, T, U. Did I write those backwards? Oh, I did. P, Q, R. And it is similar to triangle S, T, U. Okay? So, first of all, quickly looking at this, I can see that I have two sides where I actually have the measurements for. So I can make a ratio out of those two. In fact, those can be my K factor. Now, in all of these triangles, it's important to realize that the ratios are going to be the same. So the ratio of ST to PQ will be equal to the ratio of SU to PR, which will also be equal to the ratio of TU to QR. So what I mean by that is, let's write them in the colors here, ST divided by PQ is equal to SU divided by PR, which is also equal to TU divided by QR. If you were to get the lengths of all these sides and divide them, you'll end up with the exact same number. In other words, the ratios are all the exact same. Okay? That's very important. When we go to set up, this is another way we can set up the question. So if you guys notice in example one, I showed us one way we could set up the scale factor. Another way we could set this up is by plugging in values we have for these. So if you notice, we actually have the values of some of these. So for instance, ST, I have the value, 36. Value of PQ, no idea. So we're calling it small r. Value of SU, don't know. It's just T. Value of PR is 15. And the value of TU is 27. And the value of QR is 9. It's 9, right? Yeah, 9. Okay. So with this information, because all these ratios are the same, we could solve for so in other words, what I can do is I can isolate all of these ratios a pair at a time. Obviously, I have to pair them up with this one because this is the only one I actually have measurements for. But I can pair them up together and solve for the variables. So in other words, what I'm saying is I'm going to pair up this one and let's start with T. I'm going to pair these two up together and make an equation out of it. So I have T over 15 is equal to 27 over 9. I need to isolate for T. So which means I need to bring 27 to the other side, sorry, 15 to the other side. So what that's going to look like is T is equal to 27 multiplied by 15 all divided by 9. Anyone want to help me out with that? 405? There we go. Oh, 405? Yeah, I want the whole. Oh, divided by? Okay, so it ends up being 45, okay, because I'm like, that number doesn't make any sense. So the answer ends up being 45? Yes. Okay, good. So our value for T is now 45. So in other words, I can extend my ratio here. I now have 36 over R is equal to, I can substitute our T value now, which we know is 45. 45 over 15, 27 over 9, okay? And once again, I can set up to solve for our R. And I can set it up with either of these two because I now have the answers for this one and I have the answers for this ratio. So I'm going to pair it up. I'm going to pair it up with the new one we have. So let's remake that question again. Put them on the side. I have 36 over R is equal to 45 over 15. Okay. Now I have to isolate R. So the quickest way to do this is to cross multiply. When I cross multiply, I'm going to get 15 multiplied by 36 is equal to 45 times R. And then to isolate R, I divide both sides by 45. So this will look like this. 15 times 36 divided by 
45. That will give all, give you our value of R. Want to help me out with that? Great. So it ends up being 12. So let's quickly take a look at these ratios now that I solve for R also. I have a value of R, so I can plug that in for R. So what this says is 36 over 12 is equal to 45 over 15, which is also equal to 27 over 9. I can quickly do this math in my head. 36 divided by 12, 45 by 15, 27 by 9. Look at that. All the ratios are equal. So we can set it up any way we like. And just as a side note, if you remember from what we were doing on the previous page, to get from 12 to 36, I have to multiply by 3. 15 to 45, I have to multiply by 3. 9 to 27, I multiply by 3. Now, another way you could see this, to go from 36 to 12, I can divide by 3, or I multiply by 1 over 3. Remember how I told you you flip the scale factor? So I could multiply 45 times 1 over 3 to get to 15, and I could multiply 27 times 1 over 3 to get to 9. All of those work. Okay. All right, I'm going to quickly explain the uh, cross multiplying I did. Uh, where did I do it? Over right here. And I quickly express how I went from there to this step down here on the next page. So, the very first idea is we set up this ratio. We had those numbers equal to each other, and I need to isolate this R. So I put, I multiply this side by R and this side by R. These two R's cancel each other out, so I'm left with just 36. And when I multiply by R, think of it as a fraction, R over 1. And when I multiply a fraction to multiply the top numbers and the bottom numbers. So that becomes 45R, and this becomes over 15. So I'm left with this answer here. Okay. Then from there, I needed to move my 15. So to get rid of this 15, I multiplied both sides by 15. These two 15s will cancel out. And this side will then say 15 times 36. So I have 15 times 36 is equal to 45R. And finally, I needed to isolate just for R. So I divided this side by 45, and I divided this side by 45. These two 45s cancel each other out. And I'm left with R is equal to 15 times 36 divided by 45. And in the end, it was, what, 12? 12, yeah, 12. So there was a lot of steps there in the cross-multiplying. Another way I could have done this is it's always easiest. Right now, see the variables on the bottom. And somebody asks, well, what if I just brought 36 to the other side? Well, it would have looked like this. I would have been left with 1 over R equals 45 divided by 15 times 36. I'm not looking for 1 over R. I'm looking for just R. And I would have had to flip that a little more work. So a fast way I could have done this is I could have taken the 36 over R is equal to 45 over 15 and flipped both ratios. If I put R over 36 is equal to 45 over 15, now my R is on the top of the fraction. Okay? And this is all fine as long as I flip both of them. And I bring the 36 to the other side. So what it will become is 45 times 36 divided by 15 is R. If you punch that in your calculator, you will get 12. That's the fast way to do this. You can flip both of the ratios. There's many ways you can solve this. We have to be good with fractions in order to do all this stuff, though. Finally, example three. Now, there's one more rule I haven't shown you guys with the factors. They're asking for the area, okay? We need to find the area of this triangle here. I can definitely find the area of this triangle here. The rule is, when we have similar triangles, the area of, we'll call the first triangle ABC, and they call the other triangle CDE. The ratio, so the triangle, area of triangle ABC divided by the area of triangle CDE is equal to our scale factor squared. 
Okay. So in other words, first of all, let's find the area of our CDE because I can't. Area of triangle CDE. Area of the triangle is half times base times height. And if we quickly look, here's my base. Here's my height. Remember, the height of the triangle runs through the middle. Okay. So one times one point four. So in other words, I have one half times my base is one times my height is one point four. This is going to be zero point seven kilometers. Is the area of triangle C D E. Okay. Now I got to find the area of the other triangle. There's two ways you could have done this. I can find the scale factor, and I know that I multiply by three, which would give me the height of this triangle here, ABC. Because I need to know the height of this in order to figure it out to solve for this triangle here. Okay, so first of all, I need to find the scale factor. If I look at this triangle, this one's easy to notice. The length of CD is one kilometer, and we know AB corresponds to that. And it's three kilometers. So our scale factor is what, guys? Three. So we know that k is equal to three. Okay? If k is equal to three, I can rearrange this whole formula here. So let's rewrite it down here. Area of triangle ABC, which we're trying to find, over area of triangle CDE is equal to k squared. Well, I know k is equal to 3. I saw my scale factor. And we discovered the area of triangle CDE is what? 0 0.7. So let's plug those numbers in. I can plug 3 in for k, and I can substitute this value for 0 0.3 or 0 0.7. So area of triangle ABC divided by 0 0.7 is equal to 3 squared. Now I need to bring 0 0.7 to the other side so that I can isolate for area of triangle A, B, C. So this becomes 3 squared times 0 0.7, which is 9 times 0 0.7, which is 6.3. There we go. So according to this quick way, the area of triangle A, B, C, which is this guy here, is 6.3 kilometers. That's our area squared. Make sure we know that. The area of this one is 0.7 kilometers squared. 13 minutes, good. Let's just double check. We know through our scale factor that the height of this is 1.4, and our scale we discovered is 3. So if I take 1.4 times 3, that will give me my new height of this similar triangle. So what is 1.4 times 3? Anyone know? 4.2. Is that right? Okay. So let's try to find the area of ABC just to verify. So triangle ABC is equal to a half. The base is 3. The height was 4.2. That's going to be 1.5 times 4.2. Someone quickly solve that in a calculator for me. 6.3. So I could have done this two ways. I could have found the scale of a similar triangle, figured out the height, or I could set it up the way we had it with our ratio. Area of ABC divided by area of CDE is equal to K squared. Either way is fine to solve for this. So let's just quickly go over everything we did. So those are two triangles. We set up our first ratio with our rule. Areas of each triangle are equal to the scale factor squared. And we check just to make sure by solving using our similar triangles. You guys have any questions about that?